Welcome back. So, uh, this video originally was supposed to be, like, my wish list for Outsiders Draft and, like, what I wanted to see in the format. And then as I was writing this out, I realized this is just what I want in every limited set of just, like, a generic, like, this is what makes draft sets good in this game, in my opinion, anyways. Without further ado, uh, here's, like, all the different things that I would love to see in draft sets moving forward. Number one, for the love of God, can we get four heroes back in sets? Uh, I don't understand the, like, desire to have these, like, three hero, or now six hero, but secretly it's still three hero, but it's like, they're like, one's, it's like a two color type thing of, like, you can go this hero this type, or, or this hero this type. I don't know. I, I don't understand the desire for that. I, I originally thought it was just to, like, have a slower amount of heroes entering the game or something like that, but now we're going to six, so it's like, okay, so that that wasn't the, the issue. Though I guess it is less new heroes in the set, but I just, I would like to go back to four heroes. I like the nice, clean two, 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 two in the draft pod. I hate this cursed shit that we have happening now where it's like, sometimes in Uprising you'd have a, a four, two, two split, or in uh, Tales, you'd have a 4-3-1 split. That, that, F's in the chat for that poor soul that had to play Lexi. I, I, I hate that so much. I, I wouldn't have as much of a problem with it if the draft was more self-correcting. Like, for instance, in Tales, that one person on Lexi, it should be self-correcting where that one person on Lexi has the best deck in the pod, probably, because they just got every card for their deck. But that frequently wasn't the case because the balance was such where even if you were the only Lexi, your deck was still, like, mm, pretty mediocre. It was pretty hard to 3-0 a draft being the only Lexi in the pod if it was, like, a really competitive pod. I I would like to just go back to, to four heroes. Uh, the next big thing is, can we go back to 15 cards? I hated the 14 card thing. In Fab, compared to, like, Magic, with... Uh, the way that, you know, your deck works, you need 30 playables for your deck. And ideally, you would like to have a few more for, like, sideboard options or something, or the option to go above 30 if you're against a deck that could fatigue you, theoretically. Whereas in Magic, you only needed 23 cards because you need, like, 17 lands. And if you have 22 and you have an extra land, it's not the end of the world. So you end up with way more cards that you have to play in your deck that are, you know, you, you need more playables for your deck. Cutting cards from the packs down to 14 really stresses that even more. In Uprising, I think they tried fixing that with the whole Phoenix Flame thing, where theoretically you can start the draft with three Phoenix Flames in your deck. But that was really just a Fi thing. Like, you weren't trying to do that in Dromai. You literally couldn't in Icelander. It really hurt the draft format, I felt like, and really exacerbated a lot of other issues that the draft format had, such as forcing, which I'll touch on in a second. I did like the whole idea of starting the draft and you already have some cards in your pool, like the Mitre and the Phoenix Flame, and I'd like to see more of that. I think that really fixes a lot of problems that you can run into with the way the draft works in this game. But... I would like to go back to 15 cards. I don't really see much reason to go down on cards. Uh, I do think one thing that would help in that too would be potentially uh, an issue that Uprising had where it could be hard to tell signals sometimes because of the uh, distribution of cards in the pack of if people took cards to the front of the pack, you didn't really get much of a signal. And on top of that, you usually see most of your deck in Fab. So when you do end up with a card in your deck that you really didn't want to draft, like say a bad yellow or a generic that really doesn't do anything for you, or you had to play extra with cards like Phoenix Flames and Dromai, the fact that you see most of your deck every game, that will come up more often. So you end up getting punished even more when you have a bad card in your deck. The next big thing is I would really like to see the sealed format move away from just... 90% of the time is correct to just draft the hyper aggro deck. The last two formats, you sit down and you're like, yep, I'm probably Fire Briar. It's just like, no matter what you opened, even if you open bombs for the other heroes, you're usually supposed to be the hyper aggro deck. And really the only times that wasn't the case was you open your pool and you're like, wow, I did not get anything for these two, like, for Fire Briar. So I guess I have to draft Dromai or Icelander because that's what my pool dictated. It really removes a lot of what I think makes Sealed interesting. I think a lot of the skill in Sealed is the puzzle solving aspect of 
you you have to figure out what the best use of your pool is in the limited time that you have. It doesn't feel like that's the case usually with these past couple sets where you just sit down and you're like, ignore everything else in your pool, hyper aggro, and maybe you miss something and maybe there's like a chance you're supposed to be a different hero, but the percentage difference in how good your deck is probably wasn't even that much. Maybe it was like 1% better to be Icelander in your pool, but your 5 pool... Like, if your your pool is at all reasonable for the Hyper Aggro deck, you're just supposed to be that. I think that's really uninteresting. I think the biggest thing that I really want to see, though, is a robust generic slot. I think that that's something I've been missing in the last two sets. There's a lot of things that that ends up doing for you. For one, it leaves you open to be able to have a lot of cards that can kind of function as, like, a multicolor card where it'll be like, okay, I can take this card and it can work for multiple different heroes in the set. Uh, a great example of that being uh, Razor Reflex. You take that and you're like, all right, this has a really good shot of making it to my deck no matter what hero I draft. If I'm Dory, it works on my weapons. If I'm Katsu, it works on my small attacks. And I can even still put it in my Reinar deck because I do actually play some small attacks in Reinar. So like, it has a really good shot of making it to your deck and it's a nice build around card that lets you still stay open. It also lets you have build around cards in the generic slot, which I'm gonna touch on in a second. One thing that I did not like that the generic slot was used for in the last couple sets was it was pretty much used for like the talent cards, Ice, Draconic, and then the element cards. The problem I really had with that is the way those cards were designed I think was supposed to let you kind of be open in a way, but most of them didn't pan out that way. Like in Uprising, you can't stay open drafting an ice card, period. There's one ice hero. And then most of the Draconic cards were really just five cards. Like you could play them in Dromai. You take them as filler cards a lot of the time because it'd give you like a red starter or something, but you weren't excited about it. It wasn't like what you were looking for in the pack. And then in Tales, it really devolved into just... I should just take Earth cards because it's going to make it to Oldham or Briar either way. And I don't want to be Lexi, so this lets me draft either of those heroes. And I really want to be either the Oldham blockout deck or I want to be the Briar deck. Ideally, you want to be probably the Lightning Briar deck or uh, sometimes the Earth Briar deck. But so many people fighting over it, you just took whatever you could get. So it ended up with people just fighting over the same cards where no one was doing it to stay open. They were just doing it because it was the best card in the pack a lot of the time. And they were just going to take it because it always made it to their deck. So this kind of design really defeated the purpose of that slot. I felt like of letting you stay open. You just always took them. And then the other thing with that was if these cards really were only meant for like one hero, like uh, an ice card, for example, in Icelander... Well, it really wasn't a generic that let you stay open. It might as well have just been a class card at that point. So it kind of just wasted slots at the front of the pack a lot of the time. I felt like, I don't know. I, I, I like the ability to stay open with this slot. One thing that I've been really missing in a lot of these sets has been uh, build-around cards. I love build-around cards. One of my favorite examples of that would be, like, say, in uh, Magic, you had cards like Drake Haven, where that was just like, okay, I can just build my whole deck around this card. Things like that. You don't really see that too often in this game. I think it's kind of hard to design cards like that in this game due to the nature of, you know, you're seeing a fresh hand every round. So if it's a build around card that you're trying to build your deck around, if it's just something that you're going to see once during the game, cast it and then never see it again, well, it's got to be crazy if you built your whole deck around it. So I think it's kind of hard to do those things. But my favorite examples of that have been a lot of cards in the generic slot, like your uh, slogisms and regurgitating slogs, things that uh, WTR did a fantastic job of, of saying these certain things matter. Cost matters, power matters, other things like that. I think one thing that this next set's going to do that will kind of have that is uh, things like Benji, where it's going to say uh, low power matters. I think that's a great example of that. Of I do think a lot of the things need to start on the board or have something in your deck where later on you'll care about it. Again, slogism, nimbleism, and nimble strike. It's like, okay, I can play these cards, they're good, and then I get paid off later for building my deck around this type of thing. An example of that could have been in Uprising, maybe a piece of equipment you could have started the game with that you, you know, you, no one's like fighting over this card, it's like pretty mediocre, but maybe a piece of equipment that a, I don't know, the first yellow that you cast every turn deals an additional damage. So 
you don't feel like it's as cursed having to draft a bunch of yellows because you know you look at the draft and frequently at the end everyone's just picking up these low power yellow cards that they don't want in their deck so giving someone a reason that they go oh they pick up the equipment and they're like i could just take all the yellows in the pack theoretically and have a playable deck and now i'm not fighting over the same cards as everyone else in the draft pot I kind of touched on this earlier, but I would also like to see more cards that let you stay open longer and also cards that can help you deliver clearer signals. Or maybe the draft is in such a way where when the signals happen, it's more impactful on the draft. In Uprising, sometimes you would get punished for trying to stay open because the people around you would be forcing and what would happen is sometimes because you'd stay open someone near you would try to take the same signal that you end up on, but you took longer to move into the deck than they did, so you end up screwing over each other, or you end up in the middle of uh, multiple people on the same deck, so you're getting cut on both directions. So you end up with just a terrible deck, or all of you end up with terrible decks. The the format really just pushed you into forcing a lot of the times or committing to a deck very early on. A lot of this, like I was saying earlier, was due to the fact that there were so few cards at the front of the pack that really let you stay open. And even if you did take those cards, a lot of them weren't good. Or, again, it messed up the signals of the pod, where since you're not actually saying what you are or what you want to be, no one near you knows what you're doing. So they end up in weird spots next to you the format really rewarded you to communicate with your neighbors of saying hey i would like to be this please get out of my lane and if you just sat there staying open you're not communicating and no one near you knows what you're trying to do and then i mentioned earlier when i was talking about tails you have a lot of people competing over the same cards so signaling was a thing in that format but it could sometimes be kind of weird where you know everyone just taking earth cards there's not much of a signal other than i guess ice is open but then no one wants to be the ice deck so what would end up happening a lot of the times if you're trying to be the uh, diligent drafter of drafting the hard way and reading signals that just meant that you got to be lexi and you didn't really want to be lexi in that format it was very hard 3 owing good pods with lexi and then the last major thing that i really want to see in the draft formats would be more ways to play out games than just presenting the most raw numbers than your opponent uh, one of the things that i loved about wtr was a lot of games had this interesting uh, cat and mouse of both players playing towards evasion style damage at the end of the game and you'd end up in this weird spot where you'd see each other pitch these evasion cards and you go i know this is coming back around later on in the game like let's say your opponent pitched a regurgitating slog and then you pitch a razor reflex and you go mm, i see that's gonna come back around i now need to play around that so maybe i need to find a d react and set it to play around their evasion because they'll overcommit into it and i don't die or maybe you have to manipulate your life total in such a way where you know you don't get blown out by that card and you're what the fuck anyways <laughs> the uh as i was saying uh, you can manipulate your life total so that you don't get blown out by that card it really makes the games far more nuanced than just trying to brute force each other with uh sheer numbers or trying to like fatigue each other i i think it makes the games really interesting of just like playing to these things. Uh, another thing that I, kind of on that same idea is pitch stacking high synergy cards together. So that way you can kind of create a sum of your parts is greater type of situation. And uh, this can really help alleviate uh, fatigue in the formats because if your opponent is just kind of doing nothing, giving you infinite time to set up because they're just blocking everything, well, you can just pitch all these cards together and then you have this explosion at the end of the game where you just overwhelm them and kill them. I, I think a lot of these things really make the games play out more interestingly, though I do think Uprising games did play out pretty good. I uh, really enjoyed the gameplay of that format quite a bit. It was just the draft portion I thought uh, was missing something. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all the support that you guys have been uh, giving me on my videos. If there's anything that you guys would uh, like to see in the draft sets or you think are lacking in them or are missing, I'd really like to hear your thoughts on that. But yeah, that's it.
Peace, YouTube.